I've been hearing people say, and I've heard it on radio, that the MPP government and the Akufado has mismanaged the economy. That's the word they use, mismanage. They have mismanaged the economy. That's what they say. And I, I listened to it and I said, ah, but how is that possible? What is the point they are making? Akufuado here, who is president of Ghana, took over this economy in January 2017. At that time, the GDP of Ghana was 3.4 under JDM. This is the economy that Akufuado inherited in 2017. 3.4 growth of the economy. Agriculture under Fifi Kwete was growing in the negative. Now, Akufuado took the economy from 2017 and he continued in, so there was 17, 12 months, 18, 12 months, 19, 12 months, 20, 12 months, and then there was an election. And COVID came in around this time, COVID. Okay, we know what that means. If you say that Akufuado or NPP has mismanaged the economy, as they have been telling us, you would have to demonstrate, if you are being honest and candid with your views, that having taken over the economy in 2017, he mismanaged 2017, 18, 19, 20, you can even add 21. But they never talk about that. We were all here when Akufuado was running the economy in 2017 and 18. Nobody raised a finger. That Ghana's economy is being mismanaged. A president who took the economy at 3.4. Ghana's economy was growing at 3.4. Economy that had been growing at 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 8. Suddenly, after all the doomsaw uh, debacle, it was running at 3.4. 3.4 economy. He ran it. I'm not going to say what he got in 1780. You know it, viewers, and you can check it. You can Google it. Ghana's GDP in 17, 18, 19, and 20. He ran it in uh, uh, 17, 18, 19. Because you want to bully him, you don't talk about that. They want to bully Akufado because they said he would never be president. They said he's too short. They said he's that. And then he won a bigger victory than they have ever seen in Ghana before. And so they are angry with it. And he's a competent man who knows how to run his government with his people. He's not always going to be asking you people questions. Those of you who feel that Akufado must come and ask them questions. And if he didn't ask them questions, then he's a bad president. Show me. In 17, 18, 19, where is the economy running mismanaged? Show me the mismanagement in those intervening periods. If you cannot show me that mismanagement, then please hold your peace. Because in 2023, show me one economy in the world that is running well. One. There are 90, 192 countries in the world. Show me one single one that is not in crisis in this world today. And if Ghana is in the same crisis, you come and tell me that Kufaru has mismanaged economy. That is total hogwash. It's a lie. It's untrue. And it is the character of election years. I'm going to prove that right now. That when it's election year and some people feel they must have power, they feel they've been in opposition for two terms, so they must win, they say all sorts of things. I'm going to do a lot of revelation tonight on that. I'm taking you all the way to 2008. Why am I choosing 2008? Because in Ghana here today, everybody says John Kufo is great. MPP say John Kufo is great. Journalists say John Kufo is great. Media organizations say John Kufo is great. Ghana Football Association self say John Kufo is great. Everybody says John Kufo is great. I'm going to show you what they said about John Kufo in that election year. And they knew what they were saying was not true. I'm going to show you further that they have come back to apologize that what they said about John Kufo was not true. And John Kufo was not on the ballot. They said that because they wanted to run down the MPP candidate. And they are doing the same thing today. What disappoints and shocks me is that journalists who should know better are railroaded. In. Why then do they call us the fourth estate of the rail? Why? Why did Edmund Beck say that the journalist is the fourth estate? Because you can look at it and then give us the ventilation of the issues. And then journalists are saying that we, we have to face it. MPP has mismanaged the economy. Who told you that? Where is the evidence? Show me that in 2019-18, MPP mismanaged the economy. That's why you shut up about it. MPP came in these circumstances, economy growing at 3.4. President Muhammad said he cannot pay nurses and teachers. Akufuado took over. 
added nurses and teachers to the budget of the 3.4 economy, added free SHS to the budget of 3.4 economy, and yet was able to grow in 2017 at 8.1. Show me that that is a mismanaged economy. Tell me that that is a mismanaged economy before you come and join all the, 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 the talk, the narrative created by some people who want power and everybody is railroading into that. The Bible says that the, the larger way that looks like truth to a man may be dangerous. The narrow way is better. Don't get railroaded into the narrative. And I've said this here. You can always vote elections the way you feel. You can vote elections by anger. And we are angry. I'm angry. I'm hungry. Everyone is. So you can do that. But the better way to vote is to vote for your future. It, it doesn't mean we all do that because we are human beings. We are susceptible to some of these things. I'm angry. I vote angry. But if we vote angry, it comes back to haunt us. The best way to vote is to cast a ballot. When you put that ballot in the ballot paper, you cast the ballot and believe that I have voted for the future. I have not voted because I'm angry, because I'm hungry, because somebody has a car, because some DC has Land Cruiser. That's not the reason why I'm voting. I'm not voting because I'm angry. I'm voting for the future. And that's where you listen to journalists. What are the candidates saying? What are the journalists saying about what the candidates are saying? Then you decide which of the candidates' vision fits with your future, and then you can elect. That's the best way to elect. We always don't elect like that. I have not always elected like that. Many people have not. But if we look at it as we're growing up, it's a better way to vote. Now, they say that Akufado is a, has mismanaged the economy. I'm challenging everyone who is saying that Akufado has mismanaged the economy to pull back 2018 and show me whether Akufado mismanaged 2018. To bring 2017. 2017 may be too close to John Mahama, so you can leave it. But you can add it. Bring 2017 and show me that Akufado mismanaged the economy in 2017. Bring 2019 and show me that Akufado mismanaged in 2019. Bring 2020 and show me that Akufado mismanaged 2020. When Akufado was doing COVID, we were all clapping for him. When he stood on the television, they used to call him Ado Show Boy. When he stood on the television and said that he doesn't know how to raise, I'm going to show you that video today, that he doesn't know how to raise people, but when the economy gets bad, he'll be able to fix it. Because he says, stay at home. He will give you money for your salary, government workers. You don't have to pay water. You don't have to pay electricity. He will pay you. You don't have to do any work. He knew that that was going to cost a, a, a bill, a significant bill. But he said, as for the economy, we inherited, and that day in the speech, I'll show you, he mentioned 3.4. He said, as for economy, me and my people, we can do it. Because we inherited 3.4 from John Mahama. See where we are today. So economy is not a problem. But my people cannot die. I cannot have Ghanaians die. Everybody was clapping for him. Suddenly, people come and do propaganda that the economy is being mismanaged. Is being, yes, the economy is hard. England is in a recession. Japan is in a recession. America is in a recession. Russia is in a recession. Egypt is in a recession. South Africa is in doom. So... This kind of thing, it, it can get upsetting. This proper, you know, I've been doing this for such a long time. That's why today I'm bringing you 2008. We saw it in 2008. Everybody said Kufo is a criminal. He's a corrupt person. Kufo is this. Kufo is that. Kufu. Today, everybody say Kufo is an angel. He's the best president that we ever had. MPP people, go and ask Kufo for what you should do. They ask what they are saying about Kufo today. But the same people, the same individuals, who carried out this propaganda, which they started again this year. How can you say that Akufuado has mismanaged Ghana's economy in 2024? Which well, British Prime Minister held a press conference recently saying that Charlie Britain is in a recession. We are sorry, we're in a recession. We don't know what to do. America, go and look at how their country is going. And we all know why this global situation has been occasioned. Maybe the MPP is unlucky because in 2008 as, as well, there was a major global crisis. The crisis that brought Barack Obama to power. The financial crisis, the subprime borrowing in America. It happened in 2008 under MPP government. And Kufo had to come on TV to legislate the price of rice. Maybe some of you are too young, you don't remember. One day I'll get you the video. Kufo came on national television to speak about how a kilogram of rice should be sold. Because there was global crisis at the time. Now let's see what NDC people said. Please, how do I get this uh, uh, thing? Who's going to do it? Somebody's coming. Hurry up, hurry up. Come and just change it for me. Let me get on to the story. Okay. Yeah, don't save. Don't save. It's fine. So can I, so can I flip it? Uh, okay, yes. So viewers, now let's...